took place in the normally dry and dusty Western Transvaal recently. The event kicked off on the Friday with a 70-kilometer time trial to determine starting orders for the following day's 448-kilometer racing section. Heat and dust were to impose restrictions on competitors' speeds on Friday, but fortunately heavy downpours that evening improved conditions for the race on Saturday. Wat die route aan betref, dat is hoofdzakelijk die cellen as verlede jaar, daar is nieuwe trajecten in wat stariger is. Die Real Nei Hels is vandag, as ek het so mag noem, is een heeltemal nieuwe route. Het gaan dier blanke bloeroes op plaase, waar ons probeer om die spoed af te bring op wenakkers ensovoort. Setting the quickest time in the time trial were Kasi Kutsia and Richard Leake in the mighty turbocharged Toyota Hilux, followed in quick succession by six space frames. Uh, we got a good time yesterday, it was dry, I believe, in the, in the nights are raining quite a lot, and uh, the main thing, we've got a Toyota reliability on our side. So uh, I'm positive about today, and we're definitely going to do it well. The early start at 6 a.m. was heralded by drizzle, mud and low temperatures, much to the driver's collective relief. The usual disadvantage, that of darkness, is one competitors are used to. Despite their seemingly orderly start, drivers soon appear to be totally clueless as to their whereabouts and that of their route. Chaos and confusion reign supreme for a while. Kutsia and Leek might look as if they know where they're going in the Toyota, but they don't. Watch this. Where did that bush come from? Losing your way, or wrong slotting as they call it, is a fairly common occurrence in off-road racing. And normally, where one goes, another follows. In circumstances like this, the lead can, and did, change every hundred meters or so. A variety of reasons can be to blame. In the case of the Castrol Barberspan 500, rain had apparently washed out the color of the Dayglow orange route markers, thereby leaving them almost indistinguishable from the terrain. At this stage of the event, predicting an overall winner is foolish. It could well be a surprise win, or just as easily one of the current total GTE off-road championship category leaders. Special vehicle category leaders so far this year are Arnold and Estelle Matia, while production vehicle category leaders are Lance Whiteman and Gary Emmett. Last year's Barberspan winners, Alfred von Feren and Piet Pelser, are leading the commercial vehicle category. A bevy of buckies, a dash of panel beating to maintain spectator interest, and with no apparent harm done, they're on their way again. Contrary to appearances, still no one knows where they're going. Just look at the confusion. Executing a spectacular dirt loop here is veteran racer Linton Draper in his V8-powered Isuzu crew cab, along with navigator Peter Smith. And here is father and son team Derek and Tyrone Pinoy in their Jimco tandem. 16-year-old Tyrone, racing for the second time in his life, was enjoying a crash course in the discomforts of this sport. Among them are racing in a wet and muddy seat and the art of wrong slotting. One of the more competitive classes is Class 9. Harry Roscoe and Richard Carolyn, both in racecos, are two of the quickest of the single-seaters. Despite looking like a truck, Draper's Isuzu is actually classed as a space frame, and therefore is entered in Class 8. Former Barberspan 500 winners, Arby Reinecke and Lukas Dreyer, were loving every minute of the race. We know the world here. We know more about these flat areas and about the bos. I personally choose it more than the bergachtige parts and the clip parts. Others weren't having quite as much fun. Klaus Degener and Jeff Bell were forced to retire with mechanical problems. It's locked up completely. I don't know if the motor seats or the gearbox, the one coming seat. Just as you came around that tree up there. Back among the single-seaters, Richard Carolyn was enjoying a successful debut in his new Porsche engine race code. Class 9 is pretty competitive at the moment. As you can see, we've got a couple of good cars that have come in from the States in this last six months. Drivers, generally speaking, in Class 9 are guys who've been around a long time. And I think they're pretty consistent drivers and they work pretty hard at it. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see one of the national events this year going to a Class 9. 
Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne's Motortech Raceco had started 52nd because of CD problems the day before. Also late starters were Piet Putter and Tony Selvage in the Class 3 Autospears Mazda. They were to make up lots of ground and came home second in class at the end of the day. This event always has one spot where spectators and photographers can comfortably spend a good few hours, and that's the river crossing at Setlachole. The deeper the river, the more spectacular the action. Despite Suzuki quad racer Vickers von Dierfenter making it look so simple, these machines are not easy to handle. Another team making it look equally easy was the von Führen Janssen combination, while behind them much effort was being channeled into extricating vehicles from the river's muddy clutches. Another Class 9 vehicle looking good was the ex Fred Levesque Genoa, driven by Chris Kunica, previously a Beetle and then a Bucky driver. The locals couldn't believe people would do this for fun. Is this the kind of pastime you'd spend weekends pursuing? But off-road races are not your average citizen. The wetter, the muddier, the dirtier, the better it seems. And what better thrill than to extricate yourself from the mud and with a nifty wheel spin rejoin the fray. Paul Martin's navigator Dave Burton had to get out and push when their Sandmaster got stuck. Here the Natal car finally gets going and surges towards terra firma. Among the two wheelers, Mark Myron repeated last year's achievement of setting the fastest time on his Suzuki. Only 18 seconds separated the top five riders. But the rain today, which is going to be quite a factor, at least there won't be any dust, it's going to be very slippery. Um, it's going to be a long day. It's not going to be this normal six hours for 500 kilometers. It's going to be a long day and the man who keeps his head together will be the one who wins it at the end of the day. With Alfie and Jeremy, they don't like it taking a sitting down. They'll be up there pushing and it's going to be a very close race. First away in the early morning light was Mark Myron, fully aware of the pressures behind him and the necessity of maintaining a clear head and a wide open throttle on the Reco Suzuki. Ahead of him lay some 448 kilometers of mud, sweat and gears. Behind him, Patrick Andrews performed for the camera on his Lesotho office equipment Kawasaki. At this stage of the season, he's lying second in the championship. It hasn't drained a lot, it's just ideal. It um, brings the dust down and it's perfect. This is the way I like it. Former Castrol Barbers Pan 500 winner Willie Ireland was keen to repeat his previous victory on the Super Tire Suzuki. And like the rest of the field, he was planning on an error-free run. As usual, the top result was expected from the tail rider Alfie Cox on the Fortfire Kawasaki. But arch rival Jeremy Davies, mounted on the Truck Africa KTM 600, was a man with a mission. I've never won it. I've tried about seven or eight times. I've come pretty close, but I've never got there. So this year I've come here with a mission. I'm here, and I'm here to win. I never usually come to races with that attitude, but this is my last chance now. Receiving an equally good reception from the crowd was Winston Yamaha rider Richard Manning, who hails from Natal. He'd set the fastest time among the 200s the previous day and was hoping to maintain his position. Teammate Chris Dodd had proved equally quick and was also determined to shape well. Next up was new Springbok Kevin Tibbetts on the Sun City Suzuki 250, a talented and consistent rider. Also expected to do well in the 200 class was Brian Bontekunen on the Lesotho office equipment Kawasaki and also looking good on another Kawasaki was Team Green rider Yanni De Bruyne. Eighth was Vibro Brick Suzuki entrant Anthony Taylor, who took time off to wheelie for the crowds. A tumultuous cheer spurred on Yuri Himon on the Team Pro Honda Kawasaki. Himon has entered the race twice before, both attempts ending in accidents. <laughs> Back among the four-wheelers, Toyota pair could see and leak, led for a good portion of the event, but some problems would...